Get out of here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've really gotten into the bad habit of asking a huge amount of questions lately. Just a question between friends. You know? You can talk to me. She actually talked to me, man. You can talk to me. All right. Well, uh, welcome to uh, Five Great Questions podcast. Uh, my name is Alden Olmstead. Uh, as you probably know, this is, uh, well, hopefully you know, this is episode four. I never thought I would, you know, get through one or two, but here we are at four. So hopefully we'll uh, keep rolling. But um, so far, I appreciate the feedback I've gotten. It's it's very small uh, audience that is listening, but they seem to be enjoying. And uh, most importantly, I'll just be 100% honest, uh, the guests of each, each episode seem to really enjoy uh, delving into what we're going to delve into. So that to me is the most important. I'm enjoying myself. It's a hundred percent casual. And I, the, the whole premise behind the podcast is that most of us get asked so many questions on a daily and weekly basis, but we got to be honest, they're necessary. They're not necessarily interesting. Uh, and they're certainly not interesting about ourselves they're very transactional. When are you coming home? Did you remember X? Did you remember Y? Did you send this bill? Did you drop this off? Did you call your parents? Um, did you see that silly post that some dill friend sent? Uh, some meme. So anyway, that's the premise for the podcast is that we all could use. I, I like questions that cause your mind to sort of do the record scratch. And wait a second. What did he just say? That guy asked, you know, so anyway, that's why we're here. And my guest this week is, well, I don't want to blow everything. So I'll um, just tell you my, my guest this week is someone who I also have uh, some history with from years past, as I do with the previous three episodes. So uh, Mr. Jeff Duncan in uh, northern, northern Washington. What do you? What do they call Bellingham? Do they call that? What do, I want to know what the locals call Bellingham. It's uh, it's the the last big city before you get big big city before you get to <laughs> the border there. But okay, uh, so the last. So it's not like Reno, the biggest little city. Mm -hmm. It it's, it's it's the last big city. You'll like this. It's actually uh, the 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 actual name of it is is the city of subdued excitement. That's the tagline. <laughs> oh, that's no, that's pretty awesome. I do like that. Now, the only thing I want to know, and then we'll get rolling here, is is there a local IPA called Subdued Excitement? Because no. if there isn't, there should be. Oh, no. I'll right? tell you what, I call it Brewingham, actually, because <laughs> we have like 17 breweries in a town. I think we're 80,000. Right. 17 breweries. So, so you're uh, basically, which is, I think, the amount of saloons that Jack London had in the town before he drank himself to death. So <laughs> tell the locals, hey, you know what happened to this Jack guy? Uh, be careful if you be start careful. writing about trips to the Yukon and visiting too many of these freaking microbreweries. <laughs> right. no, okay. There's one down the street. It's actually, it's, it's named after my neighborhood. It's the Sunnyland IPA, and it's my, <laughs> my house beer, if you will. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I, I, it, it is... You know what? It is a, actually a cool little town. And I was thinking right before we logged on here that it is funny that the last time I saw you was at your uh, little house in Brewingham uh, on my way to Nashville to move to Nashville. And um, yes, for, for listeners, I took the long way to Nashville by way of Bellingham and Saskatchewan uh, and then down to Nashville. But that's as my as I want to do. So that's a different podcast altogether. OK, so, Mr. Jeff, you have a wife and two uh, cool little boys that probably don't take after you at all. No. I'm being sarcastic. Okay. Uh, and and um, you have been, did you receive the five questions that I sent you earlier today? I did. And I chewed on them for a while. And I'll tell you okay. what, they're so good. I, I have <laughs> no idea which one I would have chosen. So, I'm kind of hoping that you're going to guide me here, man. I'm excited. <laughs> okay, well, let's try. So I want, there is one that I, that I think you're 
and my crossroads experience, which was very brief, which actually to mm -hmm. me makes it more interesting that it was very brief, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but, so why don't you tell me your, the one that you would like to, if I said you can only pick one, you tell me yours and I'll tell you mine and we'll see if they match. Yeah. So you, one of the questions was uh, your life decision. Basically, you have you've made two decisions and that have affected your life. What are those two decisions and how did it affect you? And that was, I feel like that was probably the most fitting for where we could go in this. If you've got it written down, you wrote it way better the way the question came yeah. out. Okay, no, that was, that was the one I was hoping you would choose. Yeah. So yes, you're, the, the question for uh, listeners, and I've been doing this for, when I say doing this, I mean um, testing out random questions to strangers and friends for, I don't know, 15 years now-ish. And it seems that of all the questions, that one gets the biggest record scratch. Like that's the deepest groove in the record. They all, they all get response, like you said, but that one gets the one where people go like, well, how do you know it's two? And you don't know me, dude. And you know, whatever, just whatever's going through their mind. So, okay. So we're going to go with that one, which I'm happy about. Is there a number two you'd like to just use as a little icebreaker? Just for fun, you know. Uh, I think the uh, the the travel, the you know, trying to get around without <laughs> without your cell phone anymore. But that's yes, a, that's well. You uh, know what? I was going to call this uh, analog stories. Oh, I like that. I know. I know. See, I was. Yeah, I was torn. <laughs> I know. I was. I was torn. I. But I, but then I felt like I was pigeonholing it, and then everyone would be like, "Oh, there's those luddites on this, on this podcast, man, and they, all they do is hate on phones." And like, I don't know, I just didn't, you know. But there are some great stories and challenges um, about what we all did pre phone, pre internet, how we got around it. Just, it's very interesting. Yeah. So, so and the, the reason I put that in there is because I find that that does open up people's minds to a lot of stories. So, and yeah. as you know, I like stories. Is that one thing you know about me? As a, as a matter of fact, I do know that. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> everyone's, everyone's going, man, you guys, this is a hell long <laughs> intro to quote NorCal uh, terminology, but let's begin with, uh, yes, your whole life is determined by two choices. Tell me about yours. Yeah. Here we yeah, go. You know, it, it was, it, it was so I guess it's it's you and me. Let's let's get right down to it. When I I, I live up in Bellingham, that's kind of where I've I've spent the majority of my my youth. And uh, I was going to college at Trinity Western up in uh, Langley, BC, British Columbia. And I had been going to a small school, Trinity Western, and uh, I'd gone through a breakup in my sophomore year. And I just no direction, not sure what I was doing, spending a bunch of money on college. I said, you know what? Screw it. I don't, I don't know what I want to do here. And, uh, so I, I took a leap and I said, I'm going to, I'm going to move to San Diego, man. I'm going to Point Loma, <laughs> Nagarine. Uh, one of my buddies was down there. And if you know anything about Point Loma, it's this beautiful <laughs> Christian college that's right on the beach. It was absolutely stunning. So I wake up one morning. I helped him move back from college one summer. And uh, I wake up one morning in his, in his dorm room. And I look out the window. And it's a surfing community, right? So all the roommates are gone. And you know me. I slept in too late, as usual. And... Uh, <laughs> And so I look out the window and there's all my roommates, roommates, his roommates, and they're surfing and they're literal dolphins jumping along as these guys <laughs> are surfing. And I was like, I'm never going back to BC. <laughs> <That's not happening." laughs> okay. So hold on. Let's, let's pause just a, a minute. So number, uh, so is this the, the first choice? Is this the number one of the this two? Is the number one. This okay. This is the number one. No, this is number one. Now, um, the other thing is, is were you, are you born and raised Bellingham? No, actually, I was born in Ohio. I'm a Buckeye. Uh, oh, wow. Family, yeah, family moved to Nevada, where my mom is from, when I was three. And so we lived there for until I was about 10 years old. And then we moved up to Linden, Washington, which is uh, known for, uh, at the time, there was about 8,000 people there. But there were 37 churches in a town of 8,000. So most wow. churches per capita. And uh, my dad, he was a minister. Wow, that's so interesting. That's so interesting because I once read that Seattle was like the number one or number two least churched 
a city or or maybe I read that Washington was one of the least church states. It so, is. Okay, so within the least church state, you were in one of the highest church towns <laughs> in the least church. Okay. Okay. Talk, talk about a little, little, little trip yeah. there. But, but no, yeah, that's good. No, it, it was no, it was good. And it was a great place to grow up, good conservative community. So, you know, we could stay out all, all hours and it was a lot of fun. But pretty safe. Yeah. So mm-hmm. let's go. So let's get I want to stay on track because I, yeah. I know I have a, a, a tendency to to digress. So <laughs> one of the interesting things about this question is that sometimes people will think they're answering it, but they're actually not going far back enough to really answer it. Mm-hmm. So when when you say you think your first pivot point was you wanted to take a break in San Diego, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. What take go backwards in your mind to were you sitting in class in Bellingham? Were you did someone say, hey, you should check out San Diego? Like go backwards in your mind and really pinpoint where that point Loma came from. Yeah. Well, uh, going back further than that, I mean, when I was when I was a kid living in Nevada, you know, I was probably like five years old, and my my folks said, "Let's let's hop in the car. We're going to San Diego. You want to check out the zoo?" And so that was my whole understanding of San Diego. And I I don't remember flights. You know, we drove everywhere when I was a kid. And so um, you know, as I got older, and you know, in in, in in high school, I met this guy. He was this awesome dude. He had this spalding green hair. This is what, 2000. And, <laughs> uh, and his name was John Slagle. And uh, he turned out to be <laughs> my best friend. Uh, and uh, so John grew up in San Diego, actually in uh, on um, uh, what's the island down there? It's this. Uh, oh, Car- Coronado? Coronado. He grew up. Oh, my on gosh. Oh, yeah. there's, like, there's like 27 people that live on Coronado. It, I mean. Not literally, but you know. No, it's it's true. Like <laughs> hyper privileged, but he was you know he was a middle class dude. It wasn't like a uh, one of those situations. You know, it's not no no silver spoon. You know? Yeah. So John was my connection to San Diego, and and you know he talked about it often. I got to know his family, and they're just wonderful people. So it always kind of niggling in the back of my brain. Okay. And, so, but uh, but that little but that trip when you were a kid that that was your first inkling that like paradise exists. The yes. promised land might exist in San Diego. Well, well especially for a kid who grew up in, in, in Fallon, Nevada, you know what yeah. I mean? You're, you're yeah. high, high desert. Just you know. So when you saw, when you, I mean, just be honest, this is a side note, but come on, be yeah. on, when you first saw point break, point break and Keanu Reeves says, he's just an, an orphan kid from Ohio wants to learn how to surf. You, you had to be like, dude, that was me, dude. <laughs> That's right. me. That's it. <laughs> it, it was my it was my Bill and Ted excellent adventure to San Diego. After oh, that, that's right? awesome! <laughs> you, <right? laughs> uh, uh, I had no idea that you were. I thought you were from Nevada. I didn't know you were. I mean, born and raised. Okay. Yeah. No, I've seen a few places, and my folks. Here's the other thing too. Alden is when I was when I was uh, seven years old, my folks threw us in the back of this old Econoline van. <laughs> and said, all right, we're we're going from Nevada all the way up to uh, northern Ontario to where my dad's uncle had a cabin, Uncle Gilbert's cabin. Yeah. So we drove all the, I mean, you, you talk about going the long way around. Try doing that with four kids in the back oh. of the online van in the middle of summer with no AC. And those windows, you remember those windows? They would never pop. They, they popped out. They didn't go down. So right. We're they just, dying. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so I knew, I knew. That paradise existed elsewhere because I saw what the rest of the country looks like. <laughs> oh, wow. No, that's awesome. Okay. So then, you know, I want to honor my audience. I really do. So you're you're in San Diego. You're looking out the windows. You're seeing dolphins. I mean, this is like, you couldn't get more stereo. This is like an ad for California, basically. You basically were living an advertisement for like SoCal beaches. I mean, right, man. I, I felt like, like, uh, the governor was going to start narrating it, you know, come to California, <laughs> right. like, come to California. Dreamed, like, yeah. In my that's dreams, right. you know? And so I said, I couldn't, I couldn't go back. I couldn't go back, but here's where it got, got more challenging was that I had, uh, scholarships up at Trinity Western, you know, it was, there was no, I, I could go there, you know, I, I was enrolled, I was ready to go, I had plans, I was in student government, I had all these things going on up there, but it just didn't feel right. And so 
I said, I'm, I'm taking a shot here and I'm going to go to San Diego. I'm going to go to, to Point Loma. And I have a great relationship with my folks. Just a little divergent story here. Uh, never had a real argument with my father. I was very lucky to have just an amazing dad who was always supportive, uh, corrective, but supportive of, of my dreams. And that was one where I said, Dad, I'm not going back to Trinity. And he said, well, how are we going to pay for college here? And I said, I don't know. We've got to figure it out. Take out some loans. And he said, I can't do that. And so he and my mom prayed for, you know, two nights straight. And uh, he called me up while I'm sitting in a dorm room with John. And he says, son, I, I can't. I can't put you in debt forever. We can't afford to do it. And so, you know, I said, well, you're going to be sorry is what I said. I said, you're going to be sorry. And he said, are you threatening me? And I said, no, I totally went sideways. It was this weird moment. And I just remember, you know what? He's probably right. And I'm speaking out of turn here. And so I said, okay, well, I'm going to get my stuff figured out. And it wasn't like I'm going to headstrong and I'm going to go above you or anything like that. I just said, I got to find a way to get out on that beach and surf with dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, okay. So let's, let's just keep the timeline going. What, what, yeah. what, what year of college is this that you bailed from Trinity? It was my sophomore year. So this would have been 2004. Okay. 2004. Yeah. And so um, you believe this is pivot number one. This is decision yeah. number one because you, one. Y- it, your life was on a track. I don't know what you would have done. What was your major? Well, that's, it gets a little more complicated there, but that's a different story. <laughs> I was, a, I was in communications, hoping to be a filmmaker like yourself, right? That's okay. what I, my dream was. But, uh, after that, I just realized that it's, it's a, it's a lot, as you know, and it's, it's, it takes more than anybody would ever understand, uh, unless they're doing it. And I knew that it wasn't, wasn't my, my passion enough to make that dream come to life. And so yeah. I decided I wanted to be a history teacher. And you can imagine, <laughs> you can imagine this this uh, red, white, and blue Yankee trying to teach Canadian history with my Canadian college degree. I said, that's not going to fly. <laughs> so that's, that's where we were going. And I just, I mean, I was, I was really floating. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I didn't want to not know for $30,000 a year, you know? Right. And so the, the dream at Point Loma was, was big enough there. I could get back into communications, probably a different direction within that. But, uh, you know, more than anything, it was just I wanted that beautiful college experience. And, yep. You know, no, I get it. Yeah. So so that didn't didn't pan out the way I thought because I couldn't afford it. But in California at that time, they said, if you are a resident for a year, you get in residence pricing for school. And that would have shaved off like ten, fifteen thousand dollars on my tuition bill. So I said, "Heck yeah, I'm going to do that." But I couldn't live in San Diego. So <laughs> I happen to have uh, cousins that live in Petaluma. Uh, my cousins Nikolai and Johnny, and my my Danish uncle, Uncle Fleming, and my aunt Mary, <laughs> my mom's sister, uh, just wonderful people. So I call up my cousin Nikolai, who's a couple years older, mutual friend, and uh, I said, "Nick, I, I, I got to figure this out." And he says, "Well." come crash on my, on my couch. Like come, come live with us, do it for a few months and, you know, start working toward residency and yada, yada. So, so I did <laughs> throw my stuff in the back of, in the back of my Volkswagen Jetta and we went on a road trip. <laughs> That's right. So, so was the Jetta with the Jetta was your first car or it was, no, that was like my sixth car. I don't have as many as you do, but that was, <laughs> I had a lot of cars growing up. Well, if that was your, if that was multiple and you were still in college, you must have burned through a couple early. Oh, huh? I got stories for days. How many podcasts do you want to do? <laughs> I think I think you and I would have a few. What, what's your number? What forty two? Uh, the cars. Yeah. Oh, oh no, I'm uh, I actually just have a truck. I never thought I'd be a truck guy, but I think the truck I have is number seventeen. Oh, oh come on! What yeah. are all those other stories? Come well, I mean, I mean, there's if you count the two that I bought for the movie, then that's uh, eighteen, I nineteen. Just, I was just thinking about maybe the ones that you're not talking about because uh, THP is uh, has confiscated them as you pulled the the VIN number off the side and they had to pick well, them up when they broke well, down. Well, no, that's a good that that <laughs> that story does need a podcast. That uh, that yeah. <laughs> Yeah, never, never abandon your car in a California state park when it's uh, when you think it's not registered to you yet, but it actually is. Side note, yeah. So it did come back to bite you, did it? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, so we're on. So we're st- are, so the only thing I'm confused about are we on question? Are we on number one, one pivot point? So, or are we? 
in between. Yeah. No, it's just, this is where, I mean, so I guess this, this is where it's, it, the story gets really good for me because I'm living in my, my cousin's bedroom and <laughs> he's letting me sleep on his bed while he's on a futon. It's not more than you know, <laughs> 10 by 12 in there. And he's a 23 year old man. Like, yeah. He didn't need me crashing in his bedroom for that long. And so now quick, now hold on quick yeah, little pause. Yeah. Let's be, let's be honest because this, I do believe this, what I'm just about to say right now does happen to a lot of people in California. It happened to me when I went down to college in LA, the perception that, that, you know, you go to Southern California and everything is right on the water mm. is simply not true. So when I got to college and I was 40 minutes and I think, I think I counted one time, it was like 27 stoplights between me and the beach, <laughs> Huntington Beach. That, I think that was one of the disappointments that I was like, yeah, I know this is so cal, but this is not doing it for me, this suburbia, right? Yeah. So let's be honest, you you left the Dolphins and the, and the Point Break Johnny Utah surfers mm -hmm. to live in Petaluma, which don't get me wrong, Petaluma is a cool little town, but in the suburbia, it 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 might as well be you know, Modesto or something. I mean, if you're just on a cul-de-sac, I just mean, if you're on a cul-de-sac, I know people are going to say, Oh, the summer's in Modesto. I I'm just talking about your experience in that bedroom. It's like, all of a sudden, I wonder were you already thinking, shoot, man, my dad was right. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, you, you wake up one morning and you're like, I've got to make a whole bunch of new friends. I just left this whole life that I had before. And I love my cousins. I'll tell you that I, I had a wonderful time, a great experience. And, and you know, even in the wor weirdest of circumstances, stories for, for, for days, but, but it really, you're absolutely right. It was not the dream that I, I had planned, but I always thought of it as this is a stepping stone. You know, I'm just doing this for a year and then boom, I'm right back down South. Everything's cool. So and the, so the 100% goal was just to get your residency and get back to Point Loma. That was it. That was the okay. only thing that I wanted. That was the okay. only thing that I wanted. But, you know, as, as most good stories go, you, you find yourself starting to fall in love with the place that you, you didn't plan to. And mm -hmm. I met some great people. I went to a cool church there, Hessel. And uh, that probably uh, brings up some good memories for you as well, because that was, that was our, our crew. That was the, the way that you and I were able to connect. And, yeah. uh, and so they, they welcomed me into this cool church community when I didn't have any friends. I didn't know what I was doing. I started working at Starbucks after a couple of failed experiences. <laughs> I actually did construction for five minutes. And if anybody knows these, these soft, delicate hands, that they laugh to, to hear that story about taking <laughs> stuff off the side of buildings from 20-foot scaffolding, you know. But <laughs> I hey, I did. I did. <laughs> oh, that's nice. that's awesome. Hey, I did. I did sheetrock in Gig Harbor, Washington, for um, six weeks. I didn't know that. Yeah, Gig with Chris Osset during a oh. during a, a hot minute of of oh, maybe I'll be a, a sheetrock worker in Washington, and yeah. You made a good decision to not pursue that any further. You know what? I I think it was when I had two five eights, uh, four by eight sheets on my head. Uh, putting up in a garage in, in the middle of January in Gig Harbor. And I thought, eh, I don't know, man. <laughs> this is this is the moment you contemplate life, right? These That's are my it. life decisions. <laughs> That's it. All of a sudden, you know what? Staying back at mom's for six months, that yeah, doesn't look so bad actually right now. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, but I still want, I still want to know, are we still on pivot yeah. point one or, or are we we're we getting one. to, well, Okay. You want me to get there? We're not doing. Well, a no, I just, I just back. want you to. I just want you to. I want to know when we're done with one and we're going to two. Well, it's it's getting close. So I, yeah. I, I guess this this is the life decision that. So when I was down there, I fell in love with this place, and I fell in love with these people, and I started to have these incredible experiences, and I started to see what you would call real California, and uh, and you really opened my eyes to so much about the beauty of the place that we were in. Um, you know, I hope I get to tell some of those stories, but, but where this led to was, you know, in my loneliness and starting to make these new friends, I, I, I happened to reconnect with a girl up north and uh, back back home. And so I would spend three hours a day on my cell phone talking to this girl that 
was not there. And so I'm in this incredible place that, you know, I was, what, 21 years old thinking, yeah. you know, this is it. But I, I didn't have the perspective at the time of like knowing that you're in the good, good old days when you're there. And I mean, I knew it was amazing. I knew it was good. I was enjoying it, but I didn't know it enough to say, hey, you can wait, you know, like, I, and I don't mean that in any derogatory manner, but like, that was just, that was something else that was distracting me from where I should have been right. putting the focus. And, and how did you, and how'd you reconnect with her? Oh gosh. I, she wanted to make t-shirts that said, I met my boyfriend on Facebook. <laughs> no, 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 pardon me. My space. That's where yes. it works. <laughs> oh, that sounds like something I would do. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was, uh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. No, she, she was, <laughs> she was a nice, nice gal, but you know, things didn't work out when I moved back. Cause I, I spent what, nine months. I didn't even get to my whole year of residency in California. Oh my gosh. I, I biffed it. I absolutely face planted <sighs> You know, and uh, there was one one night, Alden, um, I was out with the crew from Hessel. It was after hours. Um, I was on the phone with with this gal and um, and uh, I'm sitting in the car. We got to the beach with, you know, the stars are out. It's this perfect night. I can't remember which beach it was. It was Salmon further. Creek. Salmon yeah. Creek, probably. Yeah. And uh, and it was like I'm I'm in this heavenly spot with all these people building a bonfire on the beach just having fun and i'm back in the car on the phone with this this person and i thought i was in the right spot you know i was like ah this is my my future wife or something stupid like that and just missed that moment oh I, you know, I, man I like right right on the other side of the windshield and i just couldn't wrap my head around hey it's time to hang up and go yeah and and that was that was sort of the story of how a lot of my experiences went is it you know, they're, they're in, they're stuck in my mind, but I can't quite say that I was a participant. You know, I just saw mm. it, you know, there's a, yeah, there's, there's, there's a, there's a movie there. Well, I don't know if a movie, there's a short there, at least that idea. I mean, that's almost because <clears throat> I think there's a lot of stories that start with the protagonist saying, you know, life was happening, but I wasn't really a part of it, even though it was around me. You know, but but that's not a hundred percent true. I mean, you were, you know, you 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 did give it a shot down at, in San Diego. You had you had a a, a plan. I mean, you had a a twenty year old plan. Which yeah. now, as we look back now, we can say, oh, you had a twenty year old plan. Yeah, it's not a real plan, but but that doesn't mean it's not a plan. Like right. for in your mind, right then, that was that was the only planning that you knew. So I, I... that's interesting that. I just, I think a lot of people can relate to that of maybe not appreciating whether, whether, whether it is, you know, they were working too much when their first kid was born, right? That's very common. Um, they, you know, they, they were like, like me, I'm a caregiver right now with, for my mom. I'm trying to, I'm trying to take notes and soak it all in because I don't want to miss this. This is, mm -hmm. this is gold. Um, there's mm -hmm. some gold that happens with, with mom just spouting out some hilarious things that are, you know, that I, sometimes she doesn't mean to. And, um, and it's just, yeah, it's just pretty awesome. So, but I think a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I always thought in my mind that I was, you know, I, I, I had been told I was wise beyond my years too young. And I assumed that was actually the case and it's not, you know, I always thought, <laughs> I, always thought I was smarter than I was, you know, What's the old saying? Uh, like, uh, you know, I wish that I had uh, told my dad. Oh, I can't remember how it goes, but basically, it comes down to you don't realize how dumb you are until you get older, right? You're exactly. So wise. Yeah. But um, you know, I thought that I was doing the right thing, establishing she's a good Christian girl, good family, all that stuff, and that wasn't the case. Um, but you, as we all know, these these things have a, a tendency to shape who we are and how we how we turn things around. I mean, I was lucky enough when I came back after stuff didn't work out with, with her that I did reconnect with who is now my wife. Um, hmm. And we just, you know, Taryn, it was, I wouldn't have done that had it not been for that failed relationship and coming back. Oh, so, so is the failed relationship pivot number two? Yeah, that was it. It was leaving oh. California because had I, had I not come back home, I probably would have 
I mean, at the worst, I would have been at Sonoma State, right? And continued yeah. that adventure. And I mean, God knows where we would have landed there. I had nothing but beautiful memories. But so you didn't. OK, so hold on. So I, so so number pivot, pivot number one or decision number one is to go down to Point Loma, which also led to a short stint in Northern California. Mm-hmm. Now, let's for the audience that doesn't know, because I actually still I actually don't remember how how did you become my roommate for <laughs> what was it? Only three months. See, I don't remember how it happened. You no, might remember it. Oh, it was so my my uncle uh, who's a, a wonderful man but he he valued work ethic and starbucks wasn't really doing 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 him any, me any favors in his eyes and he said you know i i gotta be honest with you so we gotta we gotta figure out this rent situation because i had been basically couch surfing for four right. months at that point and uh you know, he was charging me hundred bucks for food and whatnot, but I'm sure that sure. my thirty minute showers probably added up pretty quick. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so eventually, I was like, "Well, shoot, you know, you do that. I I don't want to be sharing a room with my cousin." And I'm sure Nikolai had gotten tired of sleeping on his futon, though he'd never say otherwise. <laughs> good, good, good man, but um, so there was this uh. This uh, this lanky gentleman that I ran into uh, from Hessel, and uh, he came into this uh, event, a, a group of friends together. I can't remember what restaurant it was, but he popped in. He happened to be a little older than the rest of them, so I was I was talking crap to him, trying to puff myself up, feeling <laughs> feeling cool. And you See, know I don't, what? I don't remember that. I don't know where 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 was this? I didn't say it, it was probably. It was like a coffee shop. I don't know. We were just in and out. It was it was really a, a fleeting moment, really. But and what but did, we, and 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 we we were you were talking smack or something yeah, or just you never, you never you you laughed. You didn't you, you know. And I don't I don't consider myself an arrogant person or anything like that. But I like I don't know what it was in me that I felt that it was a good idea to start <laughs> to start poking at you. You're I mean, not the you only. Were, you're not the only one. Yeah. You were what thirty four at that time, right? It's possible. I, yeah, probably 33, 34. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, it's funny because, you know, being the old guy, shoot, man, that's like, <laughs> right. you're, you're a young man, you're a young man doing your, <laughs> doing your thing in the world. And I just felt ancient to a 21 year old. Oh, so I heck yeah. That. I but but, but so what did but so you just you we just started bantering a little bit yeah, just, we were talking back and forth I mean you you were nicer than I was about it you laughed you you, you gave me some grace in that and you, you didn't push me away either which you probably should have but <laughs> uh, but uh, there was a, a a guy that had been living with you I, I his name escapes me now but he was I believe getting getting married or had to move out or something was going on I know Chris was engaged at that point Chris was oh Kevin Kevin Spallini Kevin. yeah Kevin oh, Spallini there we and go so, okay so he was he had to scoot and Kevin and I briefly worked together in the construction deal and he's like I'm moving out That's... all this got a spot yeah. and here, you're gonna love this so my aunt Mary who's the sweetest woman my aunt Mary Anytime that your name would come up in conversation around the house, she'd say, oh, that Alden. Oh, he's so sweet. That Alden, such a sweet man. And so I was like, ah, you know what? He's a cool dude. It's a it's a neat opportunity for me to get out. And, and I saw the Katati bungalow. And, dude, we that was it. I was like, I, I'm out. And I think you were charging what? It was less than 400 bucks rent or something stupid like that back then. It was dirty. Yeah, it was it was oh. dirt cheap. It was dirt cheap. I still that little that little place. I yeah, to find to find a three bedroom house for twelve hundred bucks. I mean, even in even at that time was ridiculous. Um, but we were all paying four hundred, and then we were chipping in for cable, which you might not have chipped in for, which doesn't matter. Um, but and the oh only thing God. you had to deal with was you know the 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 rats, and then the cat, and then. <laughs> Um, you know, and then Chris, and then Chris sell on the couch, you know, uh, <laughs> which may have actually turned out to be some of the best parts of the story. Right? <laughs> he, he, uh, on my way out, not to jump too far ahead, but Chris made me a, a, a mixtape. People don't do that anymore. He made me a CD that I still have today that every once in a while I'll pop on and reminisce, but, oh, uh, that's awesome. 
you know, it, you said something really cool the other day, Alden. We don't, we don't connect as often as I'd like as is real life or a husband and somebody doing their own thing. Um, but you, you, you said that, um, you know, that, that these moments, like it, they're short, it was a short, sweet time, but for me, it was so darn impactful. I mean, we had what, three months together, but here we are. Uh, so what, even as I say later? that, yeah, even as I say that, I don't believe it. Like in my mind, I think now nah, it had to be five or six, but no, I, I think you're right. I think it was just three or four months. It was the so, depth, man. It wasn't no, the breath, it was the depth. It's ridiculous. So um, so before we go to pivot number two, which I'm assuming mm -hmm. is Taryn, mm -hmm. um, yeah. what, what, why was that three months so impactful? You know, it's a, it's a really powerful question because it was the first time that the training wheels were off for me you know it was the first time that i actually had a you know a real roommate you know a couple of us and uh it was the first and it time was chat was it chad or greg yeah. that was it, oh, well, chad. it was it was chad but it was uh, chris was there chris was there for a little bit um oh. you know, he was engaged to Lori at that time and so he's you know thinking wedding and i'm seeing Seeing you guys, you know, being the 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 older, wiser of the bunch, I got to witness what it was like to be a real man for a minute and support yourself and get ready for the next thing. And, you know, I mean, it was funny. I was thinking about my first paycheck from Starbucks. I think it was like four hundred and twenty two dollars or something like that for two weeks <laughs> worth of work. And I thought, oh, I earned that. You know what I mean? And all yeah. of it went to rent. And it was, <laughs> you know, but that was, but I was, I was stoked. I was stoked. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I grew up in a lot of ways. I, there's a funny, you know, also being a, a Midwest kid in some ways, I know that I talk about the North, but my heart is still, I still wave at people when I'm driving, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but there was something really special about the, the California lifestyle that I, I just, it, it changed me, you know, it grew me in, in a lot of ways. It was okay to, to um, kind of try and fail, I guess. Hmm. And, um, or maybe it gave you the license that it was okay to fail. I don't know. I'm not putting your words in mouth. I'm just, no. I'm not putting, I'm just. That was it. And that was it. And I wouldn't say that my time down there was necessarily a failure, but it was kind of bouncing. You know, that was the first time I, I, I had a, a, a legitimate reason to lose a job, you know, to, to be hmm. truly fired as opposed to like, Hey, we were downsizing or whatever. Um, that was the first time that uh, I had to pull my weight in the house. You know, I mean, my folks and all that stuff, you know, you, yeah, whatever. But, uh, you know, I mean, remembering <laughs> you needed the lawn mode. This is this is a good one. I think you won't forget <laughs> this one, but you needed the lawn mode as any normal 21 year old should have known better. Like, go friggin' mow the lawn. <laughs> like, <laughs> And I remember getting out and, and you kept waiting on me. I'll get to it all. I'll get to it. And uh, finally, I, you know, it's a Saturday. It's sunny. I, I get up at noon or something stupid like that. And I get out to start mowing the lawn and it runs out of gas. <laughs> and rather than being a grown up, I was like, well, it's out of gas. So I guess I'll get that when I'm out shopping next or when I decide to leave the house next time. And, and so you get home from work. And you're like, dude, what's the lawnmower doing out in the middle of the front yard? It's like, like, like three strips of grass that have been taken care of. And I was like, well, I ran out of gas. And I swear you were going to pull the hair out of your head right then and there. I'm surprised you didn't just kick me out at that moment. You're like, dude, go get well, some gas. Well, and what, what made it better was that Chris Sell, bless his heart, was sleeping on the other couch in the living room. <laughs> at the time so it's not that it's not just that the lawn wasn't mowed i didn't really care that much i wasn't the home owner i was just the home renter but it, that was kind of funny i thought oh what what does he does no, doesn't know how to work it did he hit a, a bottle or something you know and then i come in and we had the we did have these two awesome couches you can tell about the couches but uh you were sprawled out <laughs> on the one couch and then i look over and as if you know, as if it takes two people to not mow a lawn, there's this other dill sprawled out on the other couch and both dudes are fast asleep and the lawn is still not mowed. And I'm like, man, this is, this is a joke just waiting to write itself here. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm not a dad, but man. <laughs> My parents would have been so embarrassed to know what a horrible roommate I was from that standpoint. You know, I thought that I could get away with it by just being charming and fun to be around. But it's like, even I wasn't good at that half the time. So <laughs> those couches too. I mean, it was noon. I, I, it was hot out. So I had to come in and lay down on the couch for a minute. Chris <laughs> Bell popped over and then sure enough, we're both crashed out. But so so did... did- so did Chris, did Chris knock on the door and say, uh, what's, you know, what's going on? And you just, or, or did you just wake up and he was asleep too? <laughs> I can't remember, but that sounds about right. I'm pretty sure that he just, well, whatever, you know, that was how we rolled back then. That's we, it. it was just like, what's, what, what's a care? I don't know what that is, you know? <laughs> Yeah, well, the girl, the girl that wanted to make the the MySpace T-shirt, I'm sure you've got a couple T-shirts in here from this stories. Um, okay, so if uh, if this were a normal podcast, we'd have an ad right here, and this would be talking about you know uh, the running shoes that feel like bare feet or something or whatever, some supplement. So let's we'll pretend that that just happened, and let's uh, let's go on to uh, what you feel is your decision. Uh, number two, which uh, totally changed or pointed your your life in the the direction that it's in now. Yeah, I, re- relocating to to leave all of that behind and pack all my stuff up and and find my way back up to to Washington and you know just kind of kind of not giving up on the dream, pursuing a different one, but one that I thought was more practical. Right, and what was the impetus? See, I again, I don't even remember what was the impetus that that kicked you off. That it, was, it was that I got tired. I thought that my cell phone was going to start growing into my face because <laughs> of the amount of time that I was talking to this woman. And, you know, it was just this foolishness for me to be spending all this time on the phone and when I could just be up there, you know. And so and so I, I, I I'm not going to say I abandoned it, but I, I left thinking that I was making a a a practical decision that it was a so you thought yeah so this girl that you had reconnected with down in san diego mm-hmm. that you're still attached to at the hip or at the phone mm-hmm. at the, and you had a flip phone i think if i remember Did you have a yeah flip phone? It was right before the razors came out i had a little sony ericsson and, and every time <laughs> that she called it was uh it was a jackpot sound so that's i still <laughs> hear that like oh my, oh my gosh well that's fitting because you spent some time in reno so that's mm-hmm. fitting um True. <laughs> okay, so you think you know what I've done this California thing, but let's face it, uh, these these roommates are are getting married and moving on. I'm gonna maybe get married and move on, uh, you, you know, and it. and so I'm gonna pack up. And you know what, California's been great, but we'll we'll see you. Was that? Yeah, yeah, and you know, in 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 retrospect, and I mean at, at the time too, I guess it, I I I knew that I was probably making. A, a rash decision, but it was a rash decision to get down there in the first place too. Um, you know, I, I wonder, I still wonder to this day, had I just stuck it out and called it quits on that relationship, would I, would I be in Northern California? Cause it holds that dear place in my heart. I know things have changed hmm. significantly up there and maybe it's that same story of like, leave the party while it's still good. But you know, that's, that's, you, you feel like there was some unfinished business and, I lied to myself saying that um, I was making the right choice, a good choice. I had to convince myself of it uh, to Hmm. leave. And, you know, when I got up, it wasn't, it wasn't three months after I had moved back that I realized that that relationship wasn't going to work, you know, what wonderful gal, but it just wasn't right. And so now I'm, now I'm doing the same thing I've done before. uh, So what, so what, what, what did life look like, uh, you know, when you first got back? Was it, uh, was it three months at the parents' house? Was it, was it just grab some quick friends from high school and say, you guys, man, I need just a quick fix. What, what did it look like? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I had been, most of my friends had gone off to college and, and uh, the, at least the ones I had grown up with. Uh, I had a, a, an awesome buddy who, who also had a kind of a, I think he did a two year, uh, two year thing at school and ended up coming back to Bellingham. And so, um, you know, I was with my parents for a couple of months and then was like, okay, I, I, I got used to being not with them. So I, I moved out with my buddy Casey. Uh, I was working at Starbucks at the time, the mothership, 
still. Yeah. And I transferred up. And here was what was cool is that my uh, my manager there, um, she was, you know, being in northern uh, Washington, we were really close to the mothership of Starbucks. And so I actually had a lot of great experiences with that company. Uh, I got to go, you know, I met the, the presidents of the company, Howard Schultz and all those characters. And I got to go to these conferences and I ended up getting to Sonics games because uh, Schultz owned the, the Sonics at the time. And that was a huge thing for me. It was basketball. And so, um, you know, I was in the box seats with the Starbucks stuff. So it was, it was an all right adventure for at that point, I was um, 22. I thought it was mm. cool. And, and they're fast tracking me. And, you know, I saw a lot of older people that had, you know, real, real careers there. And so I thought, sure. well, and it, let's face it. I mean, it was, it was the, it was the in and out burger of Washington or maybe Absolutely. it still is. I don't know, but yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. so there's no, no shame in it. And it was, and, mm -hmm. and especially at your age, it was completely reasonable to just go for it. You know, I had health insurance. I had a lot of fun. I love people. That was a big part for me is I just enjoyed chatting. You know, the stakes were relatively low. I was allowed to be myself, you know, I mean, now, now they've taken it to a whole different level of being yourself, but that's yeah. another conversation. Yeah. Be yourself and someone else and someone else and someone else. But yeah, that's it. Right. <laughs> but but it was a good it was a really good gig for me and so I did that for a little while until um you know I had always had in the back of my mind uh this girl that I had met at college she had a boyfriend of like seven years at that point um my 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 wife now Taryn and so I I wouldn't say I patiently waited because I had some adventures along the way but um there was one one day while I was living with Casey, um, we had this cool duplex and lots of adventures there, but I was lonely, you know, I was lonely. Uh, and um, and so I I was just on Facebook or M no, it was MSN at that point. It was the MSN message. Oh, my was, gosh. Facebook yeah. wasn't even like all that hot at the point. That, yeah. I mean, how funny is that? It's ubiquitous now. I mean, I maybe it's on the other side, but it was oh MSN. Gosh. And Taryn, my wife, is an artist and uh, just a creative and and so fun, very clever, very uh, just the funniest person I've ever met. Honestly, she's so witty. So I, I saw her posting stuff. And at that time on the messenger, if you're listening to music, it would say what what music was playing. Mm. And she happened to be listening to um, uh, Amsterdam by Coldplay. And that, that song meant a lot to me at that time. I went through a lot of stuff and it just, you know, I'm a romantic. So I was like, Hey, so I saw an opportunity to, to dive in and be like, Hey, what's going on? And I figured, you know, when you get to a certain age, if somebody isn't engaged after seven, eight years, they're probably not going to get married. That was, that was my, my thought. on that. And I mean, granted we were all young. I mean, she's like 20 at the time. Um, but I thought, you know what? If she doesn't have a ring on her finger, I want to. I want to see. You know, <laughs> I want to see what's what's going on with her. And yeah. So um, we we reconnected. She was very um, very generous with my advances. Was not playing playing into it. She was respectful of the relationship that she was in. Um, but I, I I wanted to make sure I planted a seed there, and so she was go so out. when you left Trinity for your adventures, she was going out with this guy, and then mm -hmm. you had all your adventures, and you come back, mm -hmm. and she's still going out with him. Yeah, and they and both I, had, and I guess they had graduated, or what was their situation? Uh, she had one year left. He wasn't going to school up there. He was doing something else. He was a journalist or something. Really awesome dude. But I just again, I just said, you know what? If if they're not married then they might not be and you know i just knew i had a connection with her at one point before and that was pretty special that's a different story for a different day but <laughs> um you know but always respectful and never you know cheating sneaking around behind anybody's back or anything like sure. that but, but I, I wanted her to know that i i saw her and uh, i was i was interested and eventually that relationship fizzled out for her and uh and i i said this is my shot i'm gonna shoot it and mm. uh the, the rest is history from there. I mean, I guess maybe not depending on how this podcast goes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, so basically it's kind of funny. Basically your, your two decisions were to, to come to California and then to leave California. Yes. That was those, those that was are it. two. 
Those are my two. But I mean, I, I, I was thinking to myself, I mean, you, you, there's all these little decisions or whatever, but I mean, if I were to say what were the, the, the ones that were the most impactful that like you could put, they were tangible decisions. Like I right. knew exactly what I was doing at the time. It wasn't an offhanded thing, you know? Right. But truly it, it sent my course. Like if I were to say, well, how are you going to delineate this? Like I would be in California had I not chosen to come back. I mean, that's, that's where I'm thinking. Right. I'd be living in San Diego or yeah. so I assume. But twenty years later I'm I'm back where I started and I'm I'm happier than I possibly could be without you know, lots of lots of rough edges getting knocked off, but you, you know, <laughs> we're always growing. But I, I love it here. And I'm yeah. Happy. And your and your uh your boys are how old? Uh eight and ten. Okay, so eight and ten. Fifteen years. I mean <laughs> No, it's awesome. It's awesome. So um <clears throat> So since your boys aren't quite at the age where you can, where these stories make the kind of sense that they're going to make when they're mm -hmm. in five, 10 years from now, have you run into anyone in your travels up in Bellingham that you're able to pass on a little of your wisdom mm -hmm. as they're talking about doing this or that? Have you been able to? Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, you look for opportunities. Um, I'm in, I'm in sales. Uh, I, I, I go into people's homes. I sell HVAC equipment, you know, talk about the dream job, right? <laughs> I'm trawling under people's houses. My kids think I'm a troll for a living because of the amount of time I spend under people's houses. But, um, <laughs> but, but I do, I do get a lot of unique uh, opportunities to connect with people and, and share and, and listen. And, you know, had I not had that experience in California, I don't know that I would be able to be as effective as I am with people and in, in knowing both uh, trying something new and having it not work out or having your life take you for a turn or a twist. Um, you know, being able to even just just chew the fat about various places and uh, like that's that's big. with some ex yeah with some experience behind yeah. it, right? Did you, do you ever walk into, do you ever walk into Starbucks these days just to get a quick coffee and think nope. to yourself, wow, <laughs> really? I'll walk, I'll walk into it. I'll walk into a different coffee shop, but uh, wow. that's a different so, story. But, 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 well, but hold on. I mean, I have nothing. There's no, they're not a sponsor, so I don't care. But, <laughs> but, but, uh, but did you had a good experience, it's, but is I, it just too, too familiar? No, it's when, what happens is when you take a good idea and, you know, the, the Starbucks is a religion. It's mm. very much a religion. And the people who work there know it. They love it. They're supported in their health insurance. They're supported in, you know, their, their, uh, their stock options and yada, yada, you name it. All of it's there. And that's why they're willing to work for 15 bucks an hour mm. is because they feel like they're supported within that community. Well, it's a good idea until you stop having any level of morality to guide these people's principles. And so hmm. I got so, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll probably too Frank, but I got disgusted by what was happening there hmm. and what I've seen happen within that business over the last decade or so, um, of, of encouraging people to their detriment, loving people to hell is kind of the way I would say hmm. it. And, um, I can't support that. I, I you know, when somebody yeah. else is going to, to Starbucks and they want to pick something up, that's fine. But I will not willfully choose to go there anymore just because I morally can't justify what I've seen, which is really, a, as you as you have brought up, it was such an impactful part of my life for me to have to do that um, just tells you the depth with, with which I've been convicted sure. of what's going on there. Well, let's let's end. Let's kind of end with two kind of interesting questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Just looking back, because this is a, you know, a journey that I hope people enjoy. Um, I enjoyed hearing it again, and like mm -hmm. I said, like I've said to other people, it's it's funny when you think you know someone's story, but there's always a couple of details that you didn't know. So that's good. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay, number one, what? Let me think. Hold on. Um, Number one, let's just, what's the most, what's the most common story that you retell about that time to anyone else? I don't just, what's the most common 
anecdote or or moment that comes up? Oh, there's there's so many, and that I think that's why those three months meant so much is because uh, you you really introduced me all to real California, and you took me under your wing, and you always treated me uh, with respect, and I just I had a, a great time growing up, and uh, you know in those three months I grew up probably more than I have in a lot of other places in my life, but um, my favorite, and I still I still get it. Um, is is uh salisbury hill and uh what that story is is uh, you'll you'll probably remember it pretty well too but um in northern california for those who who maybe haven't been there before you have all these beautiful rolling hills um and uh this you know off of wine country and uh when the moon is going it is bright it is <laughs> bright and for as hustle and bustle as southern california is or or the Bay Area in general is there's a quietness that happens in the hills of Northern California and Sonoma and Napa. So your Chrysler, which I've mistold this story a thousand times by referring to it as an Oldsmobile or something <laughs> of the like, a Buick, I think was the last bad one I did. But, uh, that the, Chry the Chrysler forgives you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That beautiful vehicle with the drop top. You used to say, Hey man, hop in, let's go for a ride. And I was, I loved it. I just, I mean, what, what's better than riding in a, in, in a, in a car with the top down, but it was always sunny, right? We're on our way to the beach. We're always doing this and that. Well, one night you said, Hey, check this out. We're driving back from somewhere. I can't remember. You put the top down. It's probably nine, 10 o'clock, something like that. Stars are out. Moon's just spotlight. And uh, you turned up the heat a little bit. And the cool thing about that car was that the heat, it was a different kind of heat than any other heat that I ever felt. Like it was the warmth coming off of that big engine. And uh, you turned on the radio, or maybe it was a tape for all I knew at that point. Uh, but uh, Peter Gabriel's Salisbury Hill comes on. And uh, we're cruising through the, through the hills in the, in the moonlight. And you say, check this out. And you just turned off the lights. And we were just cruising and it was like, it, it may as well have been bright as day. Um, but there was a, a moment there that it was almost like, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It was, it was a heaven, heaven on earth moment and with somebody that I really cared about and a really special experience. And I think um, those things stick with you. And so any chance that I get to tell my kids about that, I don't tell them about turning off the lights, but I do tell them about cruising by moonlight. Um, <laughs> yeah, never don't, experienced that, yeah, man. Yeah, no, I think yeah, don't tell them about uh, shooting off bottle rockets <laughs> from the convertible because that's not, not a good. With with the with the wildfires now, I look back and go, man, did we really do that? Oh crap, we did. Um, <laughs> And one of them, one of them, one time went up, and then it came down on the windshield, and it was on the windshield wiper. So I turned on the wiper to get it, rid of it, and then it psh, shot off. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that's a great. I, I the funny thing is, I I did, I I do remember that. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't remember where we were coming from, but I I do remember that not everyone is. You know, when you say something like that, hey, I'm going to turn off lights, you know, not everyone is, is OK with that. And um, I do remember that it was seemed like to be it was it was kind of a strange crossroads moment. I mean, for me, both of my roommates were getting married. Right. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what my life held. Um, so <clears throat> and then I'm faced with, OK, now I'm taking on a couple of college or post college students, roommates you know, I, I don't want to be the, the Fonzarelli, you know, I don't mind being Fonzarelli for a short time, but I don't want to be Fonzarelli forever. Um, but, but, but so it's just kind of funny that the crossroads, it, it kind of seemed like, I guess, looking back now, I realize that maybe both of us kind of had a little, we're having kind of a little crossroads of moment. Like I was wondering, you know, should I be, you know, am I getting left behind? Cause I'm not getting married like my friends or, and, and for you, you were, you know, you were coming up north and and wondering where this California dream was going to lead to. Um, so I, I think it was kind of a strange, um, yeah, just kind of a strange crossroads moment, which was, I guess, as my dad would say, 
you know, serendipitous um, that, that it made sense. I mean, I had a good time with, with the other two, you know, the Chad and Greg's, but they were, uh, you know, they were, <laughs> they were different and I'm glad I recorded some of that time. Um, I do drive by that house sometimes and it, it is, uh, it's a little bit sad because it like the, the people that are there now, they've got like, you know, 12 cars all junked out in front and like, you know, the lawn's not mowed. You should feel okay <laughs> that they can't mow the lawn either. Um, the difference but, is they have three broken down lawnmowers in the front yard. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But the, the tree, you know, I don't know. It just, it just looks all janky and it mm -hmm. just, I'm like, man, you know, maybe, maybe we didn't do anything amazing, but we, you know, for that three or whatever, four years when I lived there, we, you know, we cared for that house, like we owned it. And, um, I look back at the film fest, the super eight film festivals I had on the wall of the, that I would project onto the wall of the house and uh, the barbecues and the, you know, the, the rat problem and almost blowing it up with putting the, the, the smoke bomb that was supposed to go underground, but I threw it under the sink. Um, I mean, that one was pretty awesome. And then finally I had to suck it up and get a cat. I never wanted to get a cat. Yeah. But this, that girl at work was always talking about this cat and that cat and the other cat. So finally I, I came to work one day and I just said, okay, look, Shelly, check it out. I, I just need a cat. I don't, I don't care what you got. And she's like, give me five minutes, Alden. <laughs> and, that, and then she gave me that address in Petaluma and we pulled into that cul-de-sac and this, these people just handed me a kitten. No, no box, no box, no name, no, no food, just just knock on a door. Oh, oh, you're Shelly's friend. Oh, okay. Here's the kitten. And, and that cat tore it up, man. That cat took care of the, the, the rats and the birds. <laughs> I, I've got, I've got some amazing rat stories. That would be the second story that I tell the most. I don't think we have time for it here. <laughs> Save it for another podcast about the rat problem. Cause that yeah. would, Oh, that was that epic. Was I, I, yeah, no, I forgot that you were there during that time. Um, yeah, well, I want to, I want to honor my audience and not, and not get them burned out saying, yeah, I like that guy's podcast, but man, they just go on and on. Um, <laughs> so let me, so yeah, do, um, what, what's, what's just a, a final little nugget of wisdom. I don't want to sound too cliche, but what's, What's a nugget of wisdom that you would tell to your former, you would tell to your younger self during that whole time? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to look back and recognize that it was, um, you know, a young man's adventures for an old man to remember. And I think that that's, that's the, the thing is, is making those memories and hanging on to them as best you can. You know, and it's important to stay, stay connected, even if you've got that short window or that short period with people. Um, God knows where you're going to land someday and, and you might end up on a podcast being able to reminisce. And I feel amazing right now being able to go back and have those those happy memories pop back up. So stay, stay, stay in it when you're there. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Stay in it. That's that's a good one. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think in take time to, it sounds like a Ferris Bueller's cliche, but you really do got to stop and enjoy the, and enjoy the view and mm -hmm. take time to smell the roses because man, when you're, when you're at that age, it's a never ending. You're, you think you're never going to get old, right? You're yeah. never going to, you're never going to go through, you know, these old man challenges or even forget old man, but just middle age challenges. You're like, mm -hmm. ah, what's middle age? You know, that's the part of the reason I bought the convertible was because I thought I don't want a midlife crisis. I'm going to get the convertible now and just stretch it out. 100%. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, so and then it's just, you know, it's just funny what what you. I do think you got to be true to yourself. I think sometimes we overthink this idea that we've got to find ourselves or we've got to, you know, no. The, I think as I look back on my life, I think that the, the best thing I did, honestly, was just be myself. And yeah. I didn't think that was rare. But when I hear feedback from people, they're like, well, 
you know, I met you at this stage in my life, or I met you at this stage and, and you treated me like I was older or like I was your equal. And I thought, well, I, I wasn't trying to do that. All I was trying to do was be a hundred percent me. And that's it. Yeah. It doesn't need to be big. It doesn't need to be this, this huge fanfare, all that. Right. I mean, the biggest impact are from people like yourself that you, you, you just, you can't, you can't shake those things that you experienced or the things that, uh, that, that keep coming back to make you, make you happy and bring you, bring you joy and peace. I mean, that's. And years later you find that the, that it still has meaning at maybe mm -hmm. even more of a meaning than it had at, in the moment. I think I texted you at one o'clock in the morning just <laughs> to let you know that I love you. And I appreciated what you did for me from 20 years ago. And that, that, <laughs> I don't do that to everybody, Alden, but that tells you what, what, what kind of impact you can make in a short period of time. So I, I love you, man. I appreciate you. I really do. No, I love you too. I appreciate it. And I, I, I think it's awesome that um, I'm just glad that you're, you're happy. You got your, your kids are great. Your wife is great. Um, you got a cool little house and a little quiet, uh, you know, Norman Rockwell, kind of a street, I would call it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it, it sounds like I need to take a little, uh, you know, my, one of my next trip, I need to put Bellingham on the short list. Please do. We yeah. Just talking about it. We want to see your face. <laughs> Get up nice. Here. All right, Jeff. Hey, I really appreciate it. I, I hope the audience did. Um, I, if anyone's listening, you, you think you'd like to be on a, a future episode, you can email Alden five, this, the number five at Spreaker.com. If that's too difficult, just go to AldenOlmstead.com and go to the contact and, Find me somewhere uh, if you think you'd like to be on a, a future episode. Um, we'll see where this podcast goes. But for the time being, I think it's important to, um, to ask each other good questions and to take the time to listen. So love you, brother. Stay cool. All right. Peace out. Peace out. <laughs>